Hello. 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 Yes. No. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Sabir Hussain. Uh, I'm a PhD student. My and uh, I'm on the yeah, like you can say. Uh, I am here in Hong Kong in the City University of Hong Kong since one year. So um, a lot of guys having the similar questions about the Hong Kong PhD fellowship scheme. So um, I hope that uh, she will ask most probable questions, and I'm sure that. Uh, these questions will be most probable helpful for you. So let's start uh, be, without wasting time. She will ask more probable questions and I will be very happy to help all questions. So let's start, please. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I have uh, many questions regarding the uh, Hong Kong uh, PhD application. Sure. And I'm very thankful that you can help me with all these questions. Okay, uh, I'd like to start my questions. And the first one, I want to know, uh, uh, what is the right time uh, to contact um, our supervisors? Yeah, uh, I think that uh, as uh, many of the guys know that last deadline for online application submission is uh, 1 uh, December. So I think that uh, you need to, uh, at least you need to approach a supervisor or professor having the same research area two months before. But it's not a problem. Uh, as you know that today is uh, 12 November, so we have almost 25 uh, to 30 days. So you can contact at that time as well. So uh, I think it's most probably it will be quite useful if you will approach two months before, but it's not a problem. Still, you have the time, you can approach it easy. Oh, I see. But how, uh, if I cannot get any replies from those supervisors, um, do you think I should uh, insist on uh, my application? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a good um, question. Like many of the guys have tried to approach supervisor, but uh, they did not reply back positively. So uh, I know some of my colleagues that uh, they are here without contacting supervisor. They just submitted their application without approaching any supervisor. So that, uh, then if you will submit your application without approaching supervisor, then you have a good research proposal. So, uh, on the basis of that, then your graduate school will send your application to the concerned supervisor working on your research area. So if your supervisor is interested, then definitely he will conduct your interview. And then if you uh, like, uh, if you will score in a good and positive way in your, uh, in, during the interview, then obviously uh, on the basis of the interview assessment, he will send and uh, all the like is positive comments to the graduate school and then definitely you will be selected so it's not a problem you can submit it application without even contacting supervisor in case if you did not get any reply oh okay okay um oh now i'm released <laughs> oh, because yeah, i think you. i i cannot get any chance if i uh, could not get any replies from the supervisors yeah. Okay, um, my another question is, uh, uh, what are the important qualities uh, the Hong Kong uh, PhD fellowship scheme uh, will value when they uh, review the uh, applicant profile? Uh, yeah, uh, of course, it's a good question. Then whenever you are going to submit your online application submission, then definitely there are three criteria that, you know, you need to pass these three stages and then afterwards you will be finally selected the first one is like the your department this concerned department will check your online uh, all the like your academic record uh, if you have a good cgp at least uh, above 3.8 or 3.5 above then it will be really good uh, it depends on like some of the universities having the four or some having the uh, like 4.3 or so it, everyone has its own criteria so you need to provide this one as well whenever you are going to submit this one. And second one is if you have a publication, then it's really great. But if you don't have it, does not mean that you can not submit your application. Of course, you can submit your application. And then on the basis of all these, the, 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 the concerned department will select your application and then, then he will nominate your application to the concerned university. And then the university will nominate among all of these and then Hong Kong government will select finally. So these are the three stages, department, university, and the Hong Kong government. 
Uh, and the other one is like, if you are not too much competitive, then there is another chance as well. So much be possible if you will ask questions and uh, at the end, then I will let you know. If you don't ask, then I will ask this question answer as well. So what is another criteria if you don't follow these three stages? Oh, I see. Yeah. So uh, you mean uh, if I don't have any publications, I still have a chance to get the scholarship from the uh, Hong Kong uh, PhD fellow, fellowship scheme. Yes, that... of course. Of course, exactly. But, Some but of my... the... Yes, yes, oh, yes. The opportunity... Oh, I think the opportunity will be, uh, I mean, very little, right? opportunities yeah of course like in some of my colleagues they even don't have the publication but they get admission successfully uh, not on the hong kong PhD fellowship scheme but uh, there is another scheme we call it university grant council or postgraduate studentship so they are also providing enough amount you can say this is also a fully funded scholarship so you can get this as well if you don't have any enough publication uh, then you can get this prestigious opportunity as well Oh, I see. I see. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to ask also, and uh, um, you see, uh, if I cannot, if I cannot get the uh, scholarship from the Hong Kong PhD uh, fellowship scheme, uh, uh, can I be uh, uh, automatically entitled to uh, the 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 the, uh, the normal postgraduate scholarship? Yes, that's a good question. Yeah, of course, like uh, if your supervisor is interested to like um, supervise you, then definitely he will consider you. If he has a project, if he or she has a project, then definitely you will be automatically considered for this postgraduate studentship. So they, they are also pro uh, providing a huge amount. You can save a lot of amount as well. Oh, I heard that all the full-time uh, PhDs the student can get the scholarship, right? Can uh, I mean can can be funded by uh, the the university or the government, right? Yes. All the full time PhD students. Yes, of course. All the PhD students must be having the full time. Like some of them having the Hong Kong PhD fellowship scheme, while some of them having like maximum of them having the postgraduate studentship or university grant council. Oh, I see. So. Normally, normally, um, I mean, how much uh, they give for months? Oh, yeah, for uh, the Hong Kong PID fellowship scheme, they are offering 27,000 Hong Kong dollars per month. And for the postgraduate studentship, they are providing uh, 18,000 Hong Kong dollars per month. So it's a good amount. You can save a lot of amount. Oh, I see. It's yes. plenty, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's much more from the, yeah. Okay, uh, I want to ask some questions about the English proficiency uh, certificate. Yes. I um so the the lowest score for the IELTS uh, uh how how many how many? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, the the minimum criteria for uh, those having that uh, in medium of instruction in English, then they must have the IELTS six point five overall. So you must have oh. the IELTS six point five or the TOEFL seventy nine for your online application submission they have the criteria yes oh okay 6.5 right yes six point okay five, yeah. uh, so how about how about um if i am um, uh, my master degree uh i mean the instruction for all the my master degree courses uh, is english can yes. i uh, be exempted from this uh, ielts uh, certificate yeah, if, in case like if you have the bachelor degree also in English and master degree also in English, then you can be exempted from that by providing the English proficiency letter. But if any of them, like if you have the bachelor in other language, then you cannot apply. You must need to appear in the IELTS exam. So both of like medium, like bachelor and master must be in English. Then you can exempt from this. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. Um... May I know how much uh, should I pay for the uh, the application fee? Yeah, it's how a, much, yeah, uh, yeah, of course, most of the student uh, are interested, like if they, they are going to summit, then how much they need to pay? Uh, like uh, in the uh, when our last year I was going to submit the application, then we need to pay only 200 Hong Kong dollar. But uh, in this year, they are charging 300 Hong Kong dollar 
for each application submission. So if you are interested to submit one university, then you need to pay 300 Hong Kong dollar. But if you are interested in two universities, then you need to pay 600 Hong Kong dollar. Uh, but like uh, they mentioned that Hong Kong PhD fellowship scheme does not have these, uh, uh, these are not charging Hong Kong PhD fellowship scheme, but university demand, for each university demand 300 Hong Kong dollar for online application submission. So you must need to submit this 300 Hong Kong dollar. Oh, I see. So yes. it's a free, right? It's free to apply for the Hong Kong PhD yes. fellowship scheme, right? Yeah, also but there are basically two rounds. First, you need to submit the, uh, your application oh. on the RGC, Research Grant Council, and then afterwards, you must need to submit concerned university. If you will not submit your application, the concerned university, then your application will not be considered full. So you must need to pay this fee and you must need to apply for the university and submit your application fee as well. Okay, I see, I see. Yes, yes. So, um, so uh, I want to know. Uh, so, uh, what what payment method uh, are accepted uh, for this uh, for Hong Kong PhD application? Yeah. What um, payment uh, method? Um, yes, exactly. This is a good question. Like, what you need to do? You must need like if you are an international student, then you need to activate your card for international payment and any card having the like Mastercard or Visa card. Um, our credit card, these three can be easily like your money can be deducted if your account is active. Oh, I see. Yes. But uh, I mean, uh, do they also accept uh, Alipay? You know, Alipay? Yeah. Yes, yes. But uh, further, like the university, they have the, these three options uh, like wire, uh, oh. most of the, yeah, and the MasterCard and uh, oh. the Visa card. They don't have Alibaba or something like that. Oh, they don't have. Oh, uh, they, oh, don't, they don't have. Oh, okay, yeah, don't. I see. I see. Uh, so, so I, I want to know. Uh, when, when, uh, when should I um submit the refer reference letters? Yes, uh, I, as you know, that last deadline for online application submission is one September. So it's better that you need to submit your application at least five or ten days before. Along with that, you need to make sure that your reference, like your academic reference, you need to inform them that they will like submit your application within due date. So whenever you will submit your application, then automatically your academic reference will receive an email so, and they will contain like a lot of box. So they need to submit your academic reference on the behalf of you. Oh, um, I think, uh, do they require, require the, the time for, uh... For the referrers to submit the reference letter, yeah, uh, it's it's better that uh, like they you need to uh, like the academic reference must need to submit your uh, academic reference letter within the due date like uh, on or before one September, but it can be like it's not a problem like if if your supervisor or academic reference is too busy then he can submit your application letter but uh, but most of the time like most of the successful candidates have are sharing this that they already share this that we are going to submit our application and inform to the academic reference and then academic reference must need to submit your application within due date so it's better that your academic referee must need to submit your reference report on or before 1 September. Oh, I see. Okay. I think I have all my questions answered. Yeah, Thank sure. you very much. Your answer, your answers are very clear and detailed. And you I'll, are very patient and kind. Uh, I'll, Thank I'll, you. I'll always welcome. Thank you very much uh, for asking these questions. And I'm sure that these questions might be helpful for others as well. So if you will like my video, then it's really good. Please like and subscribe my channel. So thank you so much for asking these questions. Have a good day. Uh, have a bye good day bye. too.